If I pronounce this guy's name quickly enough, I would accidentally call this guy the Gundam Lafantis. Well, it kinda makes sense that this guy's infested because in the 25th episode, look at that freaking neck, man. What's going on, guys? I'm J2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Gundam Love Phantom from Gundam Build Divers. Now, first of all, right off the bat, you can see the colors are a bit off. Like, at least to me, it feels a bit off. Because I was re-watching the anime over and over and over again, trying to come up with a review, but then I just gave up. But then along the way, I just analyzed the screen time of this Gundam, and yet it seems like those colors are a bit off to me. Like, I don't know about you guys, but it feels like it is way brighter in the anime. Just the purple is pink. But the purple does look good on the kit, however, if you want anime accuracy, just go ahead and paint the purple pink. Like, I feel like the Rose and Zulu has came back on this guy, however, it doesn't look as bad. Just because there are there's some accents all over it, unlike the Rose and Zulu that has pink all over the body, or purple all, all over the body, I can't remember clearly. But anyways, this guy looks good whether or not it is in the pink or in the purple and well at first when this guy appeared I am highly doubting that I would like this just because who would expect pink and black to work great together especially when the majority of the lower body is pink or purple in this case and the majority of the upper body is black like seriously that looks terrible on paper however well Maggie pulled it off so the concept of this guy is basically the strike freedom body with extra spikes with the strike noir pack and a destiny head and that's it that is the basic concept of it it's kind of a shame to see Maggie not actually face off with Romel in the actual anime because it is it is heavily implied in the opening all but all they did is just have a gunpoint scene and that's it so the stickers you only have the eyes and sensors on the front and back of the head. That's it. That's all the stickers. So that's all the details for the, for the Love Phantom. For the articulation of this guy, it's basically the same as the Strike Freedom. So the head is on a pl as Yep, the same problem happens here. So the head is on a plastic ball joint and neck joint. The arms are on the swing out variety of polycap. Although not as much. They can rotate. The arms can go out that far, rotate above the elbow, bend at the elbow at two joints, pretty good. The wrist would rotate and wiggle. There's a ball joint in the stomach and a peg in the waist. So it can swivel back and forth and do a little bit of crunching on the torso. Front skirts can move, side skirts can move and fall off. There, side skirts can move, back skirts can move for once. The beam saber holsters can rotate, but it is kind of tight. The legs are on those universal joints, so it can do the funky dance. Suitable for Maggie. The legs can go forwards, backwards, outwards, all the way in every direction. And the rail guns can be shifted to the back as the, like the strike freedom, revealing pegs for no reason whatsoever. But then this still allows the leg to go out that much. Rotation at the hip, a double jointed knee. And then the feet can go forwards and back, side to side and rotate a little bit. And then we move on to the backpack. So there is a swivel joint in the actual backpack, backpack base that you can rotate at the base, they can rotate at the joints over here and then they can rotate up and down over here and then yeah, the striker size can move, the cannons can move and then this fin piece can rotate and flip up and down and then these handles over here can move So that is all the articulation on the Gundam Love Phantom, well just the same as the Strike Freedom, Amazing Strike Freedom. So yeah, there's really nothing to say here, It it's just decent. For the accessories, let's start off with what is on the kit first. So you have the Striker Scythes 
on the backpack. So what you need to do is to flip out the blade and then unhitch it from the from the holster over here. It is hooked in. And then flip out these handles that looks like the Strike Noir's pack's turrets. And then give them to the Le Phantom. Now, it does not hold at all. Like, I don't know if I'm doing anything wrong at all. Like, Seriously, I followed the instructions and that this is what I came up with. The blade is weighing down the entire weapon. Like, so for those of you out there who are building the Love Phantom, please tell me if you have encountered this issue or not. Like, but at least for me, I have encountered this issue countless times. I was trying to pull off like some poses for photos for, of this guy behind but I cannot get it to hold the weapon correctly because the blade is weighing down the actual weapon. And since this is a circular handle, it just adds insult to injury. But the striker size, first of all, were never used in the anime just because, well, Maggie doesn't have enough screen time. Second of all, well, they had never even opened up. So I feel like the actual striker size do not do the cut justice. They can only be a backpack ornament, that's all. Like, unless there's a way to actually fix the issue, or if I'm actually doing something wrong so as to allow it to not hold up the weapon, I'm just gonna blame it on engineering. And then the iconic weapon of the Gundam of Phantom, the beam sickle. It is not called the scythe, it is called the sickle, because apparently Maggie used it to cut grass. Well, a creative way to use a scythe, it comes with a beam, finally it is color accurate after all these years. Well, this is just the second iteration of it so I cannot blame them. So ah, uh, crap. So uh, you basically take off the hand, take off the hand cover, and then give it to the love phantom. And yep, this guy does have the same issues as the striker scythes. Even with the hand cover pushed all the way in, it still suffers from the weight issues of the blade. Like, I do not understand why, and I do not know if this is the reason why Bandai decides to not give any more, like, scythes to actual mobile suits. I'm not sure, but the only way I can think of letting it stay is to hold this rugged section over here. Which... Yeah, it does actually separate the actual hand cover, but it is worth your while just to have it stay. But this guy does also come with a storage unit for the handle. So yeah, let me just take it off. So on the backpack, on the center of the backpack, there is a clip over here. Let me remove the beam. And then here you go. You just clip it in and here you have it. The beam sight is stored on the backpack and then on to the accessories that were never mentioned in the instruction manual whatsoever so first of all we have the beam sabers that were constantly falling off on me on the actual side skirts so i decided to take them off like i do not understand why the actual like instruction manual did not mention these at all Sure, they were never used in the anime, however, the striker scythes were never used in the anime and they were mentioned. Probably just because they are a new weapon whatsoever, so these do actually work with the 2013 variety of beams and they can still combine as I've shown. shown. So, if you do not like the scythe, you can give the La Phantom these beam sabers. And then you have the rail guns on the side skirts. Of course, they were used in the anime, however, it was not mentioned in the instruction manual whatsoever. I don't know if this guy has too many accessories or too little accessories. Like, correct my grammar if I'm wrong there, but these were never mentioned. And yet they were used. And of course you have the chest cannon over here, well, nothing special. And then you have the rail guns that were integrated into the Strike Noir pack that are basically referencing the freedom. Yet again, they were never mentioned. In the, in the instruction manual, however, they were used once in the anime. And then finally, you have the beam shield. Now, I lost the original clear one, but well, I found another one from another kit. So, well, I might as well demonstrate it. 
It is just the same beam shield, nothing to worry about. It's, it never used it in the anime, again. But, well, Bandai generously gave us the effect part for the beam shield, so, yep, might as well have it. But, as you can see, it's kind of crowded in here. Just to insert the beam shield, so, well. I might as well have it off, but it is up to you guys to decide on how to display your kit. I will have it off, just because it just hinders the and the articulation of the arm that is deployed in and it just collides into everything as to make it fall off and this guy does come with two open hands left over from the strike freedom how generous so that is all the accessories for the Gundam Love Phantom now I will show you how to like basically activate its kind of full burst form so well the cannons are freaking deployed so we can just open up the striker sights and then pull it down, tug it down and open them up. So this is how I made the pose in the intro. Well, the weight distribution is kind of all over the place. So you may need a stand if you want to display it in this kind of pose. And of course it takes up a ton of space in your shelf. Like it is almost as wide as the hash mall in this kind of configuration. But anyways, there's an option for you guys for another form for the Ganonla Phantom. For the extra parts, well, we have the original Strike Freedom head, one part of V-Fin, the original mask, the tops of the rifles, and then shoulder armor over here. I was planning to use this on Gundam Capricorn, so yep, I might as well try it out. And then we also have another set over here. You can't you when you have one, kinda of forget about the other. And then on the C plates, we have a lot of yellow parts and also the original thrusters for the wings. And then finally on the E plate, I don't know what these clips are for, but they are in the other plate as well. And of course we have the original chest cannon over here. So unfortunately, you cannot fully build the original Strike Freedom from this kit. But of course, you do have the original head, so basically put the face piece over there, and you're done. If you do not like the Destiny-esque head. So for comparisons, we should bring in the Grimoire Red Barrette. Because these guys are basically the trademark duel. Although, yep, as I mentioned, we never get to see this, these guys face off against each other in the anime, either than a gunpoint scene. That's it. And then we should bring in the Gian Ultron and Sarah Vichera Razad. Maggie is just basically a middleman to just calm these two guys down when they argue, and of course, yep, they just fell down. Uh, let's just let it lean against the, the softbox. And then finally, although never really shown side by side, here's the H2 Magnum. So that's the review of the Glona Phantom. What do I think of this kit? Well, unless I'm doing something wrong, the accessories cannot be held, which means there is really no point in having him hold the beam sickle and the striker sights, either than just let them be stored like this. And the only accessory it can hold, I reckon, is the beam sabers that were not even mentioned nor used in the anime. So, due to those very facts, I think this guy doesn't redeem itself from the from the amount of stuff that it did in the anime. There is really nothing that shows Maggie's skills in this one. Like, all it all it did is have the scythe, the beam sickle, defy physics, and that is it. So all in all, this guy, well, it does have the charisma of the Strike Freedom, so if you like another variant of the Strike Freedom Gundam, here you have it. And then you also have like a kind of updated Strike Noir pack. So if you want that on your other kits, feel free to put it on. But all in all, just in this kit, the articulation is great, the colors look off but great, the molding looks great, however, the just the actual playability of this guy really holds it back. So if I did something wrong, as I did inquire multiple times in this actual review, let me know in the comments below. 
or if I did do everything right and still did not get this guy to hold his accessories, well, this guy is just basically a, a pass for me, just because of how just limited the posing ability, the posing like options are without those accessories in hand. So, yep. If you guys want to go for it, go for it. But if I were a viewer, I would not go for this kit, just because it is just so limited and it doesn't redeem itself from the anime. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more Gunpla reviews, Gunpla news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the feature channels on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye-bye.